Well, hello, racing fans, and welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for Turfentine. We are on the inside track on Saturday, the 12th of October, and we race alongside Hollywood Bets Durbanville. And uh, just having a look at the times, Hollywood Bets Durbanville will begin at 12 p.m. sharp, and then it'll be race number one at 12.20 at the Big T. Some exciting racing at Hollywood Bets Durbanville and uh, some uh, good horses will be finding their way to Tuffentine as well on Saturday. I remember chatting to Alistair during the course of the week and he said, well, this could be a race meeting that we're going to look forward to over the weekend. Well, I think with the double header, we are spoiled for some quality on the Saturday. So there's lots to play for. Race number one, as I mentioned, 12.20. The big one, the pick six at 13.30. And we should be completed by 1625, uh, well before Hollywood Bets Durbanville that ends at 1720. Alistair Cohen on the line. And uh, again, you know, it's a, a bumper weekend for us racing fans, Alistair. Double header and into Hollywood Bets Gravel on Sunday. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Good day, Dees, and uh, good day to all the viewers and all the racing fans. 18 races on the local calendar on the Saturday, like I said, on the uh, Thursday show. I'm really looking forward to the Saturday meeting at Turfentine, just because there are a whole lot of horses prepping. That does make things a little bit trickier, where you sort of work out the pros and cons of who's ready, who's not ready, what races are they going to be going for. But great to have a former Hollywood Bets Durban, Jalal winner in the former Winchester Mansion, Betway Summer Cup winner in the former Puerto Manzana, uh, a gold Cup winner in the former Future Pearl, the uh, Volkerbos Driftessa Oaks winner, the former Francis Ethel. I mean, that fifth race is really out the top draw. Wellington 2000 winner, Silver Sanctuary. A Derby winner is a three year old Aragosta. Um, there's no shortage of class in that race. There's even Safe Passage, who, of course, uh, was a grade one winner as a three year old. So, um, big, big race that uh, the rest of the races also make some appeal to me. And then, as you mentioned, off to Hollywood Bets Gravel on, on Sunday as well for the Pink Drive race meeting, the Michaelmas Handicap which will take centre stage and, and that's always a fun day out in KZN. Yeah, what a day, uh, what a day of racing to close off the weekend with that uh, charity being the winner on Sunday but uh, more about that on uh, the Hollywood Bets Gravel preview show. Race number one, 1450 metres, eight races, Barport begins at 1220 sharp. Let's bring up the field and have a look at the betting. Number six is at 22 to 10, and then we got uh, Brett Crawford runner at 22 to 10, joint favourites, numbers six and 10. Uh, 11, uh, first timer from the Mike de Kock yard at 9 to 2, joint with Sean Terry's runner, first timer at 9 to 2. I think before we even kick off with the form, etc., uh, you did mention that you know, you'd like to have a look at how the Crawford runners go on Thursday. Of course, James Crawford is the man in charge when it comes to racing in the high felt for the yard. What was your take on how they raced uh, on Thursday? Very positive Ds, um, all needing a run, a lot of them hitting the boards, Pomodoro has yet ran a lovely race, um, I see that he holds an entry for the Betway Summer Cup, does Pomodoro jet. he ran second behind uh, a very enterprising ride from Muzi Yeni on Argo Alley, who both you and I found on the show, um, and then in the final race had a 33 to one shot run second, there was Duchess of Seville, who dare I say is an average maiden, looking like she might win soon, so um, that enhances my belief that uh, the Crawford Yard's going to have a good day on the Saturday, only with four runners, and he can't have four winners, can uh, can break Crawford. James might think he can have four, but in case he hasn't noticed, he's got two runners in the same race. So what I'm going to do with that motivation and that confidence behind me is that Bar the first timers and typical first timer disclaimers apply here, Dees. Um, the bar pot is my suggested bet. I've got numbers 10 and 12, but I'm strongly tipping number 10's Burrito Salvaggio as my top choice. On debut, finished second at a big price behind Bacchus. Bacchus hasn't run since, was scratched a few weeks ago, but I think that he is above average. Third horse, Tavali Rocket, has won. Fifth horse, Orange County, held in hot regard, has won. The sixth horse, Antonio Gaudi, is still a maiden but is banging at the door. The fourth horse, Milan's World, is banging at the door. This form line is much stronger than the form line that number six, Schwarzenada, brings into the picture when running second on debut. Yes, we do have a fitness edge with Schwarzenada, but when Cat O'Clock is running a length and a half behind you, then you're probably in a spot of bother, um, certainly at the price that she is, that he has been quoted up as. With regards to the first-timers, um, 9, 11, and 12, all of them make some appeal on paper. The most appeal, probably number 12, warning, sound the daughter 
of Lancaster Bomber out of the uh, top class Sirens Call. Sirens Call's progeny are effective, but they are more effective over slightly further, but she could definitely run on and be dangerous. So 10 and 12, my top two selections, but number 10 firmly on top for me. 10 and 12, by pot numbers, 10 going to be the top choice, 22 to 10 at the time of recording. Place accumulator begins in race number 2, 1255, 2600 meters in this low division class. And with the scratching of number 2, let's see how they've priced up. Well, uh, we have got two scratchings here, 2 and 6, so it is a field of 5 runners. Number 1 at 9 to 2. Horse number three at two to one, four at uh, what's it, uh, fifteen to ten, five is uh, thirty-three to ten, and then we have seven to one about number seven. Yeah, distance uh, for numbers three uh, in particular and number five. You know, I just want to know what's your thoughts on them going the trip, uh, numbers three and five. Well, these, let's start with number three, Sneak Preview. I wouldn't have ordinarily thought that she would be equipped to go this distance, but the way she won her last start when trying 2,000 metres for the first time, dead heating with I Am Regal, and running down I Am Regal the way that she did, I'm a believer now, although out of a fast state rock, which is speed, speed, and more speed, that, uh, that she could well see out this distance, not foolproof by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I definitely like what I saw last time from number three, Sneak Preview, who is one of a few horses that has uh, got lucky to lock her scratching his head, probably until now, so I give her a vote of confidence. Five Snow Moon, I can't really see it, to be honest, being by last winter out of a spaceship mare. It's brave. Uh, we know that Mano Pandaram has um, some daring ideas, and I think this could be uh, an idea that might not work for number five, Snow Moon. That's the way that I read about those two. As mentioned, the bar potters have suggested a bet these, and I'll tell you what, I sent through these selections before the two scratchings of uh, numbers two and six, so I probably overplayed it. Um, and we don't want to be getting bogged down with crazy cliches about small fields and uh, the potential lack of pace that there is but in this case there could be a, a lack of pace with no one really having um, desires and, and certainly the the record of being effective from the front so 3, 4 and 7 are my numbers I do in all honesty expect to double up here, um, just reading between the lines the fact that Wayo Mowen clearly kept this race alive and number 7 rainy season stands his ground at a draw 1, maybe that's an angle to take here with recommending that number 7 rainy season could be a top selection off a lightweight and then the other two horses I've gone in three sneak preview and then number six uh, number four rather Demover Muzi Yeni takes her out for Joey Soma they uh, back in each other's good books after Muzi missed out on Betway Spring Challenge race day a week ago to go and ride in Singapore but as we know financially that was a very fruitful decision Demover good winner last time over Ideal Future was given a worldie of a ride by Muzi Yeni on that occasion there's every chance that she will back that up it was over a thousand days between her first win and her second win but uh, now that she's got her confidence up and she He's visited the winner's enclosure again. It's not impossible that she backs it up. So I've gone on with the three horses here, Dees. Okay, that's that small field, three runners. Elster's going to stick with that. But as he mentioned, uh, you could possibly go two runners. You make the decision between his three runners, numbers three, four, and seven. Pick six begins in race number three. It's over 1,450 meters. And it is a maiden plate for fillies and mares. Horse number three... What an introduction. Well, we'll ask uh, Alistair about that over 1,200 meters, which is way too short, 7 to 2. Uh, then we go on to number 4 at 11 to 10, number 5 at 7 to 2, and then uh, Roy Magnus runner, who one uh, has to respect as well, uh, going the distance because... Uh, whilst the horse drifted out in the betting first time out. I thought that was a respectable debut from the daughter of One World and with the two and a half off this time round, we'll be trading at nine to two. Now let's begin with this horse that we did give some airtime to, uh, number three, uh, wearing of the green, because uh, you did mention the stallion, Kingman, the conditions on the day, uh, that, that race over 1,200 meters, you know, considering where she was positioned and how she was finishing off, yes, you know, she was soundly beaten back in third, but she's open to any amount of improvement once they start putting her over ground, and this will be the first step, Alistair, 1,450 meters. 
Yeah, spot on, Dees. Well, the first thing I can establish is there's no chance of rain um, in Joburg. So from that perspective and uh, the theory that Kingman's grow an extra leg in soft conditions, that that dynamic is blown out the window. But what is definitely very, very interesting, Dees, is going to be 33 to turf and take tomorrow for what it's worth. But what is very interesting, Dees, with number three, wearing of the green. This was a filly that was scratched at Turfentine a week earlier because she refused to go into the stalls. And as you can see, um, she wasn't too straightforward when loading on debut, on her official debut either, when slow away and losing ground at the start. Watching that race closely, Dees, and I've gone back and watched it again, the first half of the race was not pretty at all. She's just got absolutely no speed. Um, so the step up of an extra 250 metres will benefit her, but will it benefit her enough? That's the big question that I have. She will improve. She hit the line with lots in hand last time out. But is she just looking to take this one extra run before we see something from number number three wearing of the green? That's the angle that I'll take. This is the first leg of the pick six. And the bipod, I've gone in with two horses. The pick six, I'll go in with three, with number three wearing of the green being my other horse. Um, as far as the bipod, my suggested bet is concerned, four and seven are my numbers. Let's start with number four, Mountain High. Obviously, fitness would be a little bit of a question mark, but she ran with the, the best two-year-old fillies on the half vaults and, and even behind Sorcerer Supreme. That's no mean feat. Um, she has been a little bit disappointing. She has sort of conspired to get herself beaten along the way. Pierre Stratum, though, takes her out for Sean Terry. You can see that that whole combination and uh, the sort of life behind the yard at the moment is, is going from strength to strength. So I'd motivate number four, Mountain High, as my top selection. But backup definitely comes in the four, number seven, Ono no Kamachi, the daughter of One World. Although she drifted on debut, there was a lot of early talk for her. Um, she drifted as a result of the support for Bakwena, and I think probably Probably the word got out that she just wasn't a thousand meter horse. So uh, she, much like uh, wearing of the green, should step up with a run under the belt and over the distance. I'd say that number seven, Oh No No Kamachi, would be a little bit more effective of a 1450 than wearing of the green would be. If it was a mile, I'd probably go the other way. So um, yeah, that's why I make the Magna runner a danger. And also the fact that we've got Trent Mayhew claiming two and a half. Uh, the man's claim, as I've said a few times, is absolutely golden at the moment. Just reading in between the lines there for the pick six, I think numbers three, four, and seven are going to be the play here for Alistair Cohen, but he does tip numbers four and seven for uh, the bar pot. Race number four, jackpot one, 2,000 meters, merit rated 96 handicap. It's an A division class, and uh, there is some form, there's some quality, and these horses have all done fairly well for their respective yards in a barring uh, you know, a horse like Hawkwell, who I would think uh, that uh, the stable may be a bit disappointed on what he has achieved thus far, which is just the one win, but a lot of places. Number one, uh, sorry, number two is at eight to one, three at nine to two, four, Tamarus Tree is the top one at 17 to 10. Alistair, there's money here and some good money anti post Hollywood bets for Taran Zaki's runner. Call Apache Sun nine to two. That's trading now at three to one, and it's double figures the balance. So, uh, do we respect the money that's coming for number six Apache Sun? Uh, do we look uh, for some cover with the number four Tamaris Tree, or are we looking for a form result here? Because the one runner that I am looking at as a possible danger to the top one is number three Imperial Master, and I think Stuart Pettigrew. Uh, showed his hand on Thursday, and as he steps his horses out, uh, you will see that they will start to improve. Yeah, that's a possibility, Deeds, but uh, Imperial Masters held by Thunny Play, and Thunny Play is well held by Tamaris Tree, so uh, putting pieces of the puzzle together, although indirectly, um, I think both have got a little bit to do with number four, Tamaris Tree. Um, in the bipod, I bank at number four. In the pick six, I would back him up with number six, Apache Sun, simply what we saw on Thursday with Argo Ali, who beat Apache Sun. But uh, let me talk you through it. Um, devastated that Tamaris Tree's around 17 to 10, because what I saw last time at the Vile, the source is going to be a huge run. I was at the Vile on the 26th of September. And for me, I thought that he was undone by the light weight of Royal Edition, who got first run, got to the, got a soft lead, and Tamaris Tree was left to do the chasing. I like the way Tamaris Tree stayed on, but I'm also of the opinion that Tamaris Tree ran into a little spot of bother about 300 metres out, and Gavin Lorena 
kind of lost his momentum for a couple of strides. I don't know if he pecked, if he changed strides, whatever the case may have been. Um, I think this horse is better on the inside track for one owner. He's only had one of his three career wins on the inside track. Gavin's obviously at Hollywood Bets Dermaville on Saturday to ride one stripe, among others. That's his main reason for the visit. Um, so Cabello Mazzagnani is a more than willing and able replacement. But I just like what I saw from number four, Tamara Street, last time. And, and clearly, bookmakers and some punters have seen the same thing. On that run, finished in front of Dunny Player and finished in front of Sugar Blast. Sugar Blast has got a two kilo sweep turn around four and a half lengths I don't think so um, as mentioned with Thunny Player being a key horse with Imperial Master Thunny Player's got Imperial Master hold so I think that makes me feel a little bit easier about that whole dynamic the only reason why I've got time for number six Apache Sun as far as the pick six is concerned is the fact that he steps up in distance and last time beaten by Argo Ali I liked Apache Sun last time I was disappointed with the run but in hindsight the fact that Argo Ali beat a field probably a little stronger than this at the fall on Thursday under quite a ride by Musi Yeni the number six Apache Sun out of draw one definitely gets a thumbs up as a winning chance and back up to number four Tamara's tree if anything else wins I'm in trouble okay Okay, Tamara Streep, lots of confidence coming through from Alistair Cohen, having watched that last start and trying to dissect, you know, why uh, the horse ran second. And he's given us his thoughts there, number four, Tamara Streep. Uh, well, you could possibly go all in there after those comments from Alistair Cohen. I really liked uh, the way the horse ran. Um, under the circumstances. Race number five, Pinnacle Stakes, it's over 1,600 metres. We'll have a look at the best weighted column once we go to the betting. We'll bring up the field and there's quality up. Number one at 11 to two. Horse number five at 33 to 10. Number six is at four to one. Horse number eight uh, is trading at nine to two. Nine at six to one. And it's double figures, the balance. Alistair, you know, during our KZN champion season, uh, I wanted to see this, but it did not materialize where uh, we had the Phillies uh, at the highest level uh, take on the Colson Geldings. We did not see that during our KZN champion season. Of course, Francis Edel was carded to race uh, in the main event of the season with its, the Hollywood Bet Sturb in July, but that was not to be. But these Phillies haven't been... You know, against the Colson Geldings, uh, they've been, you know, kept to their own sex and they've run well. The form is clear to see. I understand that, you know, this type of race will favor them. And I'll just read out the best weighted column for our racing fans out there. Francis Ethel joint with Beating Wings at 125, then Silver Century at 123. And then we go on to Aragosta and Safe Passage from the De Cockyard at 121. So they dominate the best weighted column. But, you know, it's, it's actually like the first time that I'm going to see them against the boys. And I'm very intrigued and interested to know and see how they go. He's very, very interesting and, and complicated race. You're spot on. It was the first Hollywood Bets to in July in a long, long time that we didn't see any fillies in the field. Um, taking on the boys and, and as you say as we go through the season you know last season or what, what should I say just over a season ago we had Princess Callow who was obviously um, head and shoulders above the rest in the year earlier we had Captain's Ransom beating the boys in, in her um, sort of distance class so we didn't get much of a gauge over the last 12 months exactly where these fillies uh, stand up when you have a look at Silver Saintly, although Mike DeCock would never be scared of running a filly against boys she was isolated to her own sex, Frances Ethel likewise um, further down the page beating wings, although she was a bit of a later maturer, she didn't run against the boys either, so um, we've we've got that bit of a question mark, but the way that this race is structured, these I mean, it is a, a true pinnacle stakes, but looking at the programme of the race, sex allowance of two kilograms for fillies and mares subject to a minimum weight of 50 kilograms. The reason why the best weighted column had two horses, two pounds ahead of Silver Sanctuary, because Silver Sanctuary is at the bottom of her weight band, being uh, her uh, current rating of 116. So we don't have much of a gauge, but I think with that said, Dees, the fact that every single horse in this race, 12 of the 13 anyway, bar number 12 Mercantile come off a layoff, uh, we are having a bit of a guess up 
with who's going to be fit enough, who's going to be ready enough, and which races, which direction these horses are going to be taking. I'm going to trust the best way to call him with the fillies in this race. Five, six, and eight are my numbers. Eight Attic has finished the only non filly that I've gone in with because Calvin Habib's back on board him. He gets a tune out of the Son of Master on my fate. I'm a big believer that this horse has got a... Uh, if, well, he won the Victory Moon last year, but I'm a big believer that uh, that he's a, a top division or nearly a top division horse. Number eight Attic has finished. Went very close in the... Uh, Durban Consolation, the splash up 2200 behind Kate Peagle last time on Hollywood Bets Durban Gelade. I assume he'll be tracking towards the Victory Moon yet again. Um, and then we've obviously got numbers five and six, Francis Ethel and Silver Sanctuary. I assume both of those will be aiming towards the Victory Moon as well. Francis Ethel out of a good draw, as mentioned. I like what I saw from the uh, Crawford horses on Thursday, so the break doesn't worry me as much. I know Silver Sanctuary beat her in the Will Abington, and she's got a length and let's say a half to turn around but the Will Lavington was a mess of a race um, and taking nothing away from Silver Sanctuary's win Richard Faree was just sharper than everyone else to go towards the inside while everyone else was uh, was sort of looking for position and running onto heels towards the middle of the course so I think Francis Ethel's certainly capable of getting closer to number six Silver Sanctuary both of them looking for further both of them looking for uh, more black type this season yes but I think that they can get the measure over their male contemporaries and also just to address the elephants in the room the male contemporaries have a lot of mileage on the clock these four-year-old fillies are probably going to hit their peak this season and the same comment applies for number nine beating wings um she could also have a good season ahead but i'm just going to lean towards the grade one form of a beating wings in this particular case just before we close just one thing and and, and i want you to to give me your take because you know with your experience of the racing at the high felt I'm using the computer form. They have uh, got a column here where it's rest plus one, six starts, two wins, two places, which I'm happy with. And I'm talking about number eight, Atticus Finch. Uh, because the, the, the distance is a five star. The course and distance is 100%. The jockey and horse is four rides, three wins. Ticks a lot of boxes for me. The, the thing is, I, I just want you to give me your experience on Alec Laird. You know, when it comes to, I'm not talking about handicap racing and that type of thing, Alistair. Just with the, the horses that are at the higher level, when in his care. Over the years, you, you think they possibly, you know, need a run or two before they come back to peak fitness? A horse like Atticus Finch, you know, you think Ali could have him, you know, I don't want to give a percentage, but will he be, you know, quite ready to win a race like this? No, but who will be? Um, I think Alec can get them right. I remember a horse called Eagle Strike, Dees. He was very sparingly raced. It wasn't all that long ago either was Eagle Strike, but he was sparingly raced. And Alec could uh, could get him fresh and well. Um, you know, Alec is also a man that looks at the bigger picture, but he, Alec is... Uh, Alec gets some fit. There's no doubt about that. Um, also, we've had the dynamic of Alec spending the last bit of winter in Durban, and uh, we haven't seen much from him in the half. I know he had a winner last week with uh, the Octagon, who was also in Durban for the winter. Um, so that is a gauge, some sort of gauge that we got to go with. But as far as history is concerned, yeah, I remember... I think that Aziz de Cox probably do it best um, with getting them right after a break and, and not particularly needing that first run back. But Alec isn't a million miles behind. I, I'm glad that you brought up horses coming back from a break. I just want to give an admirable and honourable mention for number one, Winchester Mansion. He gets Pierce Stradham on board from a dreadful draw. I've sidestepped him because of the dreadful draw. Um, Winchester Mansion does run his best races fresh. So definite quartet chance number one, Winchester Mansion. Don't let him run loose because we know what he's capable of. Um, but I don't think he can win from that draw. But a lot of respect for the Phillies. We've given this race proper airtime because these horses are aiming for bigger and better things to come for this season. But all said and done, Alistair's given you his thoughts. I'm going to go eight Atticus Finch now, having ha listened to Alistair Cohen on his thoughts and, of course, what is being presented in black and white uh, in the computer form. Race number six, progress plate, 1,450 metres. Uh, well, the quality continues, doesn't it? And uh, this is... Uh, a race over 1,450 meters. Number one at eight to one, number two at five to one. Then we go on to a horse that uh, will have blinkers on for the first time. Now well, that is very interesting at four to one. Uh, four, Guy Gibson, that's been backed. Hollywood Beds, 10 to one into seven to one. Number six, the Africa House is at seven to one. 
And now, this is where I think that a horse could be very cleverly and smartly placed by the Brett Crawford stable. She's a filly and she's only three. Uh, her name is Fatal Floor. And uh, yeah, how your career turns out that on, uh, you know, your two-year-old campaign, you, you bump into a horse called Quid Po Quo. Uh, that's his fateful flaw. I know she's been 50 to 1 and 7 to 1 in that type of things in those feature races. But that said, you know, they did an outstanding job with her. And she's just found the star of last season when it comes to the juveniles get the better of her. She carries 50 kgs and she's priced up at 17 to 10. The best way to call him, by the way, Alistair, number 3 at a 122. 10 is well below at uh, Nelson. And then we go on to number 5 at a 108 and 2 at a 104. Uh, James Crawford, Brett Crawford would have thought about where they're going to start up the engine with the filly. Could they have found the ideal spot or are they trying to and I'll make a bold statement with their filly, yeah. Uh, if I know Brett Crawford, he would probably say that this is just a starting point. If I know James Crawford, he'll be looking to make a noise. Um, <laughs> no, this horse number 10, Fatal Floor D, she could be absolutely anything. She, I, I'll tell you what, when you see the bar pot at the end, and as I'm talking through this race, I've made a terrible mistake in this race because my numbers are going to be one and three um and that is how i've worked it out but when looking at this race again i don't think i need number one i definitely need number three and that's a potential banker but if anything you're going to trouble number three it's probably going to be number 10 fatal flaw i wait with interest how this form is going to work with quid pro quo i don't know where i stand a lot of racing experts say the form is not going to work out quit well Right, let's let's be kinder about that. Quid pro quo, just absolute sensation of her generation and everything else behind her not too good. Um, I don't know whether I subscribe to that, but I will have a bit more of an opinion after Fatal Floor runs. With 50 kilos, these, she's going to be very, very dangerous. Um, you know, she just found the best of her generation and she could take advantage of a potentially low confident number three, give me another chance. But pound for pound, these, if this horse runs to... 70% of his ability. Number three, giving another chance, will make light of this opposition. He's got blinkers on for the first time. And if that is what he's needed this whole time, then this won't be a contest. His last run in the Betway, Joburg Spring Challenge, there were a lot of horses that never got into the race. And if you consider that he was a couple of lengths behind main defender, does that not set him up here? He was less than four lengths behind the horse of the year, Dave the King. He is a blacked up winner when he won the grade three on Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge Day as a two-year-old. This horse has also run to the best of his generation. And as mentioned, he might be a low confidence horse at the moment. Um, the blinkers might enhance that confidence. So I'm going to make number three, give me another chance, a very, very strong selection. Number two, Taylor the Comet's good enough to win, but for him it's win or bust. And lately it's been bust. I don't see too much reason why he's suddenly going to come alive, number two, Taylor the Comet. I'd like to see probably a, a slow progress to him coming alive, but he has been gelded. He's capable. Um, I can't see him beating number three. Give me another chance. Certainly not on the 12th of October 2024 with what's being presented here. I've got number one Presley in my play, as mentioned, because he's just a solid, good, consistent horse. But I don't for one moment believe he's in the same class as number three. Give me another chance, especially giving him three kilos. These, my numbers are going to show one and three at the back. Um, number three, give me another chance. Very, very close to a banker in all bets. If you're looking for backup, it's probably number 10, Fatal Floor. Okay, that's it. I like uh, that uh, plot process for from Alistair Cohen. Before we move along to race number seven, bit of a curveball for you, Alistair. I know that you would have had a, a glance at uh, the Hollywood Bets Durbanville a race card, and if you page over to race number eight, it's a similar scenario where we got the older horse taking on uh, the younger horse, the horse that will be debuting as a three-year-old, and uh, that is uh, One Stripe and Snow Pilot. Without any explanation, I'm going to give you the betting, and then you just give me in order between the top two, if those are your top two. One stripe, who is way out with Snow Pilot, is at 14 to 10, and Snow Pilot is at 17 to 10. If I have to tell you to tip them one, two, how would you tip them in that race? Two from three. Two from three. Not even. Number seven, Snow Pilot. Thank you, Alistair Cohen. 
And apologies if I did put you on the spot there. We'll move along to race number seven. It's a Phillies and Mares 92 divided handicap over 2,000 meters. Now, a number one is at seven to one. Number three at six to one. Four is at two to one. Five is at four to one. Six is at four to one. Seven and eight to one. And eight is a seven to one shot. I mentioned last time out when I liked number four, Forgiveness, that uh, Mike DeCock was very smart in the way he placed that filly with the weight that she came in in that open company. And you can see no penalty incurred. Uh, but uh, he's now traveled her up to Gauteng. I can tell you she's good, Alistair, from what I've seen of her. And, uh, you know, now that the way she won last time out, I know she had the weight on her side, etc. But she is good. These, I got a message from Robert Bloomberg on Thursday night. Um, obviously not, not uh, motivated anything for this particular show but telling me about number four forgiveness that uh, her main target is going to be the yellowwood which is just under a month away a handicap um, she has been prepared in Durban she travels up to Joburg on Friday she's probably traveling up as we speak uh, she didn't get a penalty for her win in what was a conditional uh, was graduation last time out when beating spinning the progress, correct. Uh, conditional progress plate when beating Spelling B, so she might have escaped from the handicapper. I don't quite believe that Hollywood Betts Gravel is her absolute favourite. I think that she'll be better on a more galloping track, like when she gets to Turfentine stand side. Um, but I like what I saw from Forgiveness last time. I mean, I don't want to be blowing my own trap, but I was actually the one that told Robert Bloomberg, get on to the online sale, have a look, because I think there's a horse you might be interested in. Um, I was at his house. It was the day of the uh, of what was supposed to be the World Sports Betting Case in Guineas at Hollywood Bets Gravel. The online sale was going on. There was obviously a delay um, down at, uh, at Hollywood Bets Gravel, and Robert and I went on, and, and the horse that I was referring to without telling him the name was Forgiveness, and he picked it up straight away. He messaged Mark, um, and Mark said right i'm going to buy her back so you're in and uh, and this is the result of it and, and i think everyone's quite optimistic that she is going to take a power of beating in race number seven i do have respect for number three apache fighter though these um if you have a look at the la france from last year which was supposed to be on this card but was scrapped due to a paucity of acceptors United Council, who I don't think is all that bad, finished two lengths behind Apache Fighter, and Apache Fighter's two kilos better off for that. I liked Apache Fighter's runs back after a lengthy layoff last time was obviously all wrong, but I do believe that this distance is more up her alley. I'd draw one. I can see her being dangerous, number number three, Apache Fighter. So three and four, my winning chances in the race. Number eight, Darling Harbour, has a place chance as well. She's doing nasty at and we go on to the lucky last race number eight. We want to close things off on a high year. Phillies and Mares, 72 handicap, 2,000 meters the distance. Number one is 7 to 1. Two is at 22 to 10. Horse number three uh, that both Alistair and myself liked last time out. Well, now 9 to 2. Four at 8 to 1. Six at 8 to 1. Seven is at 5 to 1. Uh, 10 is a scratching. And 11 have a party. Uh, with a bottom weight of 52 is at 6 to 1. How are we closing this race meeting off? With number two, Hats Queen D's. Um, Chase Morjan takes her out for Tony Peter. I'd motivate her as a place accumulator banker. Pick six, there might be a couple of others of interest, but number two, Hats Queen has, has hit her straps the moment that she's gone over an extra distance. She's got more impressive. I thought her last win was easily her best when beating Free in Seattle. She made Free in Seattle look quite ordinary. It's her third run after a layoff. She's at her home course. There's a lot to like about number two, Hats Queen's chances. And like mentioned, I cannot see her missing the first three. She is my top selection, and she can very, very well win the race. Uh, number three, Ideal Future. I do not like on the turf and inside track. I'd uh, uh, I'd sidestep her. Yes, she's got a top three chance. Uh, no way you can write that off. But she's backing up off a penalty, and she's just a different horse at the Vile or on the stand side track. The tight track at, uh, at Turfentine doesn't really suit her all that much. So from that point of view, I think number 11 have a party as a chance of uh, potentially uh, troubling those in front of her. Better last run. She does come in here just half a kilo under sufferance, but moves in. I think counts as for that. And I think number 11 have a party is, is an interesting runner as far as top three credentials are concerned. All 
also, don't leave out number eight, Silky Jet. Uh, she was, I think, the only horse who stood her ground in the LA France, which, as mentioned, got scrapped. That may have just been a signal of intent. I'm sure Wei O'Malley would have preferred her running over an extended distance rather than 2,000 metres. But out of her last run, um, just as I call up the form line here in front of me, Silky Jet ran in front of Play With Fire, who is the subsequent winner from that piece of form. So I have respect for her. So um, in a corner, uh, my numbers here would be two eight eleven and three that's how i took them in the last but number two very very hard to beat two eight eleven and three and uh, that's how we wrap things up it's been a longer show than usual but really and thoroughly enjoy these discussions with alistair cohen just giving you the valued racing fan some food for thought let's get into your suggested bet alistair yeah, as mentioned, I really like this card, Dees, um, and I shall be getting stuck into the uh, bipod, which is on screen, and I probably would get involved in uh, in some sort of all to come slash pick six. But here's my suggestion: bet ten and twelve, Burrito Salvaggio, and Warning Samba, three, four, and seven, Sneak Preview, Demover, and Rainy Season, by four and seven, Mountain High, and Ono No Comanche, by Banker Ford, Tamaris Tree for me, by five, six, and eight, Francis Ethel, Silver Sanctuary, and. Uh, uh, Atticus Finch, and then one and three. Um, as mentioned, I don't think we need number one, Presley. Number three, give me another chance close to a banker. Okay, that is it. Alistair Cohen on the line. Thanks for your time, Ali. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, that's it. As we say goodbye to Alistair Cohen on behalf of the Gallup TV team, Alistair Cohen, myself, Dees Dan, and to you, the valued racing fan. It looks like a wonderful race card at Turfentine on this inside track. We're racing alongside Hollywood Bets, Durbanville. There's lots to play for. Jot down those times. I think that's most important when it comes to taking bets. You don't want to be caught napping at whichever center you are going to be aiming to hit the bullseye. Have a blast. Find all the winners. And until we meet again, you take care. Salani Gasly.